In this video I'm gonna give you a simple flowchart to figure out if an AI invention is patentable in Europe. Welcome to Beyond Best Practice, the place where I share everything I know to help IP professionals file better digital patents. Hope you enjoy and subscribe. Okay, so this is from a conference talk I was giving recently at the ASTP annual conference, which is the leading European Technology Transfer Association. It's a flowchart I came up with to explain to people when a given AI slash ML invention is patentable at the European Patent Office. I'm going to screen share the slides. So if you are listening to this on the podcast, you might want to switch to the video version on YouTube or LinkedIn for the full picture. And by the way, if you don't know me, my name is Bastian Best. I'm a European patent attorney and I'm making these videos to help IP professionals file better digital patents. In the flowchart, uh, the AI is really treated as a tool to do something. And so the question becomes, what is the AI used for? And if it's used for something non-technical, bad luck, it is not patentable. Um, an example would be when, uh, consider you are shopping online, um, uh, there might be an AI that recommends the next pair of sneakers to you based on your purchase history and based on a profile of what the artificial intelligence thinks you might like, right? For the EPO, for the European Patent Office, this is a non-technical use of AI, so the AI is not patentable. So, on the other hand, chances are better when the AI is used for something technical then. And here, I think it's helpful to look at two scenarios. Um, first, is the technical use in itself obvious? Uh, what I mean by that is, um, think about a hard technical problem in the real world. So, for example, um, predictive maintenance in an industrial setting, right? So, you want to repair your machine before it actually breaks. And in the past, let's say you might have done that by monitoring certain process parameters and then making an educated guess about when certain parts should be replaced proactively. Now, uh, if the idea is just let's use AI for that, uh, that would be the upper branch here. Um, the fact that the AI is used to solve the technical problem of predictive maintenance that makes the AI itself become a technical tool so that it enters the classic inventive step examination. However, on this level of abstraction, it's probably obvious because, well, using AI for something like predictive maintenance is probably part of the current trend, right? So to get a European patent, the idea of using AI for something technical would need to be surprising in some sense. And I'd say today, this is probably difficult to argue in many um, scenarios. What's probably better, and that's the second scenario, is that uh, when the AI is adapted specifically to solve the technical problem. So the idea is not just um, let's use AI for that, but the invention is really about the way the AI, the machine learning, is set up specifically so that it can actually solve the technical problem at hand. And there's lots and lots of white space in this area and I see AI patents getting granted left and right by the EPO. So that's kind of my overview flowchart to figure out on a broad level whether uh, there is any chance of thinking about patent projection for a given AI uh, use case. Now of course the decisive question in the end is always which problems are now technical and which ones are non-technical. And uh, especially in the AI space, there is some mildly strange developments at the, uh, in the European case law, I would say. But that's probably a topic for a separate video. So please do let me know in the comments if this flowchart is useful and if you want me to share some concrete examples of technical and non-technical uses of AI. Let me know in the comments. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you found this content valuable, here's three more ways to file better digital patents. 1. Book a free virtual coffee meeting with me and ask me anything. Link in the description. 2. Follow me on LinkedIn for daily-ish tips and tricks. And 3. Email this content piece to a colleague and share it on LinkedIn. This way I see it's relevant and can make more.